Hi everybody, my name is Patty and I am the Leather Lady. We're gonna be working on a saddle today and we're gonna be replacing some saddle strings and conchos. So hopefully this will help you. This will be a good video for you and give you some tips and tools on how to change this. So um, we're gonna get started. So there's been some broken um, saddle strings off this front. Um, these saddle strings are okay, however, she wants to match all of them. So we're going to replace these as well. We're going to replace these conchos. There actually is one missing, so we're going to replace them. Um, she has gone out and purchased uh, some conchos here, so this is what she would like to replace them with. So let's get started. So what you're going to see here is that we have one that's broken here. And this is sort of easy, nice, easy to show you. So most saddle strings actually have a screw in the center and most of the time some saddle nails, some little short saddle nails that go in here. Um, and so we're going to take those out and then we're going to remove everything. Once we remove it, um, we want to make sure it's clean underneath. So I go in and clean and, and condition and all that kind of stuff. So. I've got the other side already removed, but let's go ahead and get this one removed. Some of the tools that you may need, and if you don't have a drill, um, you can use just a hand screwdriver. Most of them are gonna take a Phillip head. So we're going to actually remove this, um, and then we're gonna go ahead and remove those little nails. So you're gonna wanna put your drill in reverse, okay? and go slowly so you don't strip that screw. A lot of the times it's best to use the original parts if you can. This is a Pirelli saddle, so we wanna make sure that she gets all her parts out. So that actually goes straight into the tree. So that's gonna be a little bit of a longer screw in case you don't have a screw. Um, definitely just wanna replace it uh, with a small screw. Doesn't have to be the exact. Saddle stuff is, <clears throat> excuse me, Saddle stuff is a lot like what um, we use in the normal day use. So another thing too is I have this handy um, nail remover. Uh, this is something that I learned from a friend. Let me tell you, if you don't have one of these, get one because it sure doesn't, it helps you a lot in not only saddles, but everything else. So you're gonna take, um, you can take either side. However, I like to take the flatter side because I don't wanna rip the leather. So we are going to just slowly work our way around and lift this out. You can hear it pop. Just gently get underneath there. And move around it slowly but surely because you don't want to make those holes in the tree any bigger than what they are or you're going to have some loose nails when you go back in okay so there we go we've removed that and these nails are a little long okay uh, they go straight into the tree but you can see now this is so dirty um, that we're going to clean it off so the saddle string will go through here and we're going to pull that saddle string out and a lot of the times I will use just a little screwdriver and pull the old one out okay because if this if the leather is dry it's going to be harder how you get your leather to move um, really easily is by just wetting it okay and then we're gonna remove these nails because what I'm gonna do for her is I'm gonna condition this, get it all soft, because this is hard as rock, all right? So this is really hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and condition her. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these off. Um, I have the ones on the other side off. I'll turn the saddle around a little bit. And you'll be able to see, I've got marks on the floor so you guys can see this. So you can see these are already removed. Okay, and there's one there removed. Now this was the one with the concho that we're gonna take the big concho and put in, in here. Um, when you're buying conchos though, I'll do a video on conchos, but 
when you're buying conchos though you want to be really careful these are more crafty conchos um, so sometimes when you get a saddle set you should have two large conchos and two small conchos um, and you can also have maybe um, depending on your saddle so you usually have one here one here and one in the front your smaller ones sometimes you may even have more conchos than that so look for sets that you at least have three to four big ones three to four um, uh, small ones and the reason why is you want to have some extra in case one breaks these are a slotted concho um, for your saddle strings or maybe a one breaks or you lose one or something happens with those all right actually let's just go ahead and do one of the big ones for you hopefully we can see this here let's just do another one all right you want to have good light as well wherever you're working because some of these are going to be stubborn this is very old these are the original saddle strings And there we go, we got the next screw out. Okay, and then we also have two more nails. Actually, I only see one on this back side. Sometimes you might be able to pull it with your fingers. If you have strong fingers, but there is, is that one in there? It's so dirty, I can't tell. Yes, there is a nail in there, so. We got underneath over there, so let's just work it again. Here. And these are really green. So sometimes if they're really, really torn, the, and these are called rosettes. So if they're really, really torn or they get damaged, I do replace them. However, um, I try to match the style of rosette and the dye because sometimes I'll have to re-dye them. And that's why I want to be really careful when I take these out because I want to keep the originals. But while I try to get this off, I'm going to go ahead and stop the thing. I'm going to take these other ones off and I'll come back and show you what I did here. This is a nail that does not want to come out and I want to make sure the underside is okay. All right, so I will be right back. So one thing I do want to show you while we're taking these apart, you'll see that these are intertwined um, so that they actually stay in place. So what I do is I actually take, keep cutting in front of the camera there, I take uh, some needle nose pliers and I actually pull these through back through. So you're going to find, and you're going to have to um, cut these slits into um, your uh, saddle string to make it um, to make it actually do this design here, this slit. So a lot of the times you can wiggle it. Again, if the leather is dry, you can go ahead and wet it um, and get that so that you can get it easily through which I may stop the recording and do again. Um, but, or you can get a hold of it with some needle nose pliers, get one of the, the little things underneath it and one on top of it and pull through, okay? Just twist with your, um, with your wrist. Again, if, again, these are old, they've been dried, they've been probably rained on, um, they probably are just not conditioned very well. So then I just take and roll that and then I grab it again and I roll it and roll it until I actually can get a good grip on it and just pull it through. Okay. So we have one more to go through, so stretch it up, make it so that you can grab it. Go from 
here. Again, roll your wrist and you'll be able to get at least a finger in there and pull that through, okay? And then you can take your concho and slide that off. Look at how green that is in there. That's all the mold and the rain. Now, if you have a tack room <laughs> um, and you don't put some heat in it, this is what your saddle is going to do, and then it's going to turn this beautiful snow white to um, actually uh, from the mold and the mildew. You got to put heat in your tack room, guys. About 40 degrees is 45 degrees is really good. If you can keep it about 50 degrees, it's even better. Um, in my shop, I have, it's a garage door, so it lets air in. So my heat bill goes up a lot because of the, um, because of the, we're in the Pacific Northwest and it's rainy. So we have a lot of wet along with cold in the winter. And again, there is this, this is a nail. I already removed the other one. I'm going to see if I can remove this. I but the nail that was in this other one was really long, too long. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be that long, really. You're just holding a little rosette in. You're not um, needing that big of a nail, but some saddle makers do. Okay. And I might take a screwdriver, slide it in there. Be careful you're not scratching the leather. Okay. All right, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and finish these, getting these off, and I'll be back. Okay, so we have gotten the saddle strings off, and I left one so that I can show you, okay? Um, so what it's going to look like when you pull it off, so this one is partially broken, okay? And so when you pull it off, um, you're going to have the, this has got a slide concho, or a, a yeah, it's for your for your slides. It's got little holes in it, right? So we're just going to pull this guy off and remove this whole piece, this concho. Okay, so this is the underside. Now remember that screw was there, right? So grab the screw. It was in here. It goes in here, right? So we're going to remove that screw. And now we have the rosette. Okay, so this rosette did not have, um, which it was interesting, didn't have a nail. So why they put one nail in one, one and not in the other. This is just the way saddle makers do it. So again, we need to place a hole when we do this here, um, but we're going to pull this out. So we're going to pull this one out. Actually, I'll use a little um, screwdriver. I use a lot of house tools that you have. Now it's gonna catch on that, so I'm gonna go ahead and push that through. Again, if it's wet, it's gonna be easier. I had to wet some of these to pull them through. Um, and I like to keep these things together because I give all the parts back to the guest, or the guest, the customer, um, because you never know, you might need an extra strap or you might want something to match your saddle. So you're gonna pull this all off. So there you have your saddle string, okay? So um, with that, um, you're going to see on the saddle string, whoo, almost did that through my foot. Okay, so here's the other one that had the nail in it. Okay, so you can actually take um, some needle nose pliers and push that through. And you're probably going to put a new nail in there if you're going to use a nail. But again, we need to pull this through here. So you have that is there and there's nasty green but if you look at this one here see how they did this they actually made holes now i make slits um, that way you don't see it as much but you can do holes so you have a hole in the center for that screw right and then you've got to have two holes so that you can pull these through and make that little pretty design now you got to be really careful because if you make them too far down here or too far up then you're not going to have that so it's probably about you know, an inch and a half from that center hole, okay? Depends on your rosettes, because this is a sort of a large rosette, and then we have the small rosettes, okay? So, uh, definitely. So we're gonna pull all those off. Now we have the two nails in here. We just gotta get rid of those. Again, I probably will put fresh nails in. And then, 
push those and pull that out. You can just twist them out there. If you can tell, I got little man hands because I go through all that. Okay, because we have these here. Um, and then I'm not going to worry too much about um, these conchos here. I'll give them back to them, but they're, you're miss, they're missing some, so why would they want to really keep them unless, I don't know, maybe decoration for something else. You could actually, people love to make um, like bags and stuff with different used hardware, distressed hardware and stuff. Um, you might be able to save it for that. So there's that concho. So we've got all those strings. We've got this. All right. So what we're going to do now is there's a couple of things. We're going to go back through. Um, I'm going to put these aside. We're going to go back through. And what we have to do is a lot of the time saddle strings basically let go. Okay. So we've got to know the length of the saddle string that we want to use. So we're going to see if my latigo, my saddle string, um, this is 5 8 thick, I think. Let me double check. Depends on the saddle. So we're going to look and see. It's actually half inch. Okay. So then we're going to make sure that we're at the same for the here. So it's just a little bit under half inch, but if I want to go ahead and bevel these edges, it'll make it a um, little under a half inch. But if you're close, it doesn't matter. Again, you're going to make the slit, so it doesn't really matter. But we want to stay pretty close to what they have. Now, this is a little bit off as far as color, but it's going to match the saddle. So you do want to get saddle strings that match the saddle, right? Um, so you're going to see that. Okay, but the other thing, too, is I asked her, do you really like the length of your saddle string? Because they are very, very long. So um, she said, yeah, you could probably make them a little bit shorter. So my saddle string, I bought a long one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it down, but I'm going to measure it and see what her saddle strings were. Okay. And what I'll probably do is um, just because I personally like longer saddle strings in the back, because if you have a coat, um, if you have a knapsack or something, or if you are out trail riding, and sometimes if you have like an, um, what do you call that? An outback, you know, oil skin. Those things can get a little bit bulky. They may not be that heavy, but they're bulky. So you want long enough strings to be able to wrap around that um, as well as um, if they're too short, you're sort of screwed. So um, I do make them longer. So I will make them longer and then we'll cut them um, if I choose to do so at the end. You can always cut them. If I make them for you and they're too long, you can always just take a box knife and make a nice little angle there. Or if you have some leather shears, you can do that too. All right. Um, and then the other thing is, we'll go through that next. But the first thing that we need to do before we start to put anything back on again is make sure that we clean everything. So what I use, um, saddle, different people use different things. It depends on the saddle and what I'm doing. I have two different things I use. I like this gel from Be Natural that I use, um, either a more Rudy's, um, and then I have Black Rock. So if you have not ever seen Black Rock, then um, I do sell it here in my shop and on my website. So it is more of a paste um, and it actually just takes a little bit on there, like a little gel paste there. Uh, and then I take just a little dab. Doesn't take much. This stuff is a little jar, but it goes a long, long way. And this will not only clean, but it will condition um, and soften as well. So you want to find a product that actually has some lanolin in it um, or some, uh, like Be Natural has it. I can't remember what it has in it, but it um, definitely is a softener. So, and the other thing too is, if I can't get into some tooling, grab yourself an old toothbrush. Now she didn't want me to clean this saddle, so I'm just gonna clean this area where I'm gonna put this back on, okay? And look at all the dirt it comes off with that. Great, great product made in the United States. Again, um, I sell it on my website, the Leather Lady um, LLC.com. I'm not doing a plug, but if you want something good and you're not you're not liking what you're using, 
give it a try. So with this product, what we're going to do is we're going to wet it. I mean, we're going to moisten it on both sides because these things are really hard. They're really, really hard. It's because they haven't been taken off and cleaned. So if she had cleaned her saddle, most people are not going to take them off. Okay, and then we're going to let those sit for about a half an hour because you want it to set in. You want it to set in and we're just going to set them aside and we're going to do each each one. Now, the great thing about black rock for you guys with your western saddles, yeah, there is a nail there, but it didn't go that is really weird because there's not even a spot for a nail. That's really weird. And I'll get around here a little bit just to clean that up. Uh, but the great thing about black rock is it doesn't uh, darken your saddle. So if you're, it may just a slight bit while you're doing it. However, that is going to come back. Your saddle is moldy. It takes it right off. I've got a saddle that is completely tooled. Um, that I'm going to be doing here next after this saddle that she couldn't get the mold off. Um, there's a couple of tricks you can do. However, um, get yourself a good old toothbrush and the right product and it'll come off or products. Um, it'll come off. All right. So instead of having you sitting here, watch um, me do this. Oh, we'll do it. There's only two more. I'll do it really, really quick. And what I do is my towels. Now I sell um, applicators. They're shearling applicators um, and they're about two inch round. I don't even have one here with me right at the moment. They're all packaged up right now. Um, but their shearling is just wool, cheap skin. And um, they were great applicators for this black rock. Usually if you um, um, buy them, they come in a two pack or a four pack. Um, you can also use just your hands, your fingers. Um, I take old t-shirts, cut them up. I don't know how many. You know, my daughter gives me my, her old t-shirts, my old t-shirts, oh, sweatshirts um, that I use. Um, and I use my wool applicators. Because if you want to buff anything, if you want to make this really, really shiny, those wool applicators would really do that for you. Okay, so... Uh, go on my website look up wool applicator you'll see what i'm talking about and that's the leather lady llc.com all right all right so we've got those four cleaned that cleaned i'm going to turn the saddle around all right and then we're going to clean those spots. Hopefully, well, let's pull that, but this spot here in the front one. And then we're just going to let those set for a little bit. And while we're doing that, we're going to measure our. And that's okay. You can see, look at how dirty that was. Oh, and that's so nasty. And that leather saying, ooh, that feels so good. <laughs> give me more, give me more. And I will, I will usually rub it until all that dirt is off because you just don't want that sitting on your saddle. It's not good for it. So when I come back to this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clean cloth or I'm going to grab one of my wool applicators and I'm just going to go over it just one more time to uh, shine it up. But because these are so dirty and now they're nice and clean. All right, and then you just take that and throw it away. So I'm gonna stop the video for a minute. I'm gonna move um, around so that I can set up so I can show you how I'm going to cut these uh, saddle strings and then we're gonna put them back on. All right, so I will be right back in a few minutes. Okay, so we are ready to go ahead and cut some strings. All right, um, so I set up my area so that you can see some of the tools. You're gonna need a box knife um, you may have just a hole punch, a regular rotary hole punch. That's fine. Just something to punch a hole. Um, these are, and it just needs to be a hole big enough for the nail to go through. So that's going to be too big. So I'm going to go through my punches and try to find the smaller one. This one is going to be too small. 
So let me try, you can always can make the hole bigger, but we'll probably use this one here. All right, so I'm gonna put those aside there. Okay, so that's for the hole, you need a hammer. Um, and you need either, um, again, we're gonna be cutting a nice long edge in there. So um, we wanna make sure that we have either scissors or something of that nature. So I use leather shears. So while we were away, I went ahead and measured the old saddle string. So they were 66 inches, okay? So we're just gonna measure this saddle string and we're gonna cut all four. So this is 36 inches here. My board is 36 inches. And so then we're gonna go ahead and cut. Now they don't have to be exact, guys. Don't have to get really anal about it unless you're saddle making and you're paying, somebody's paying a lot of money for it. So then we're just gonna lop it off, okay? And try to use um, my, not like my blade, a little bit dull, but it's fine. We're gonna go ahead and throw that one piece. So there we've got one saddle string. Put that off to the side there so I don't get them all mixed up. Then we're gonna go with another because we're gonna be doing four. So that's 36 plus another 30 inches. 66 where they were before. I don't, my thing. Again, for those of you that are just getting new into leather, um, so leather smiths will use a head knife. Um, a head knife, you gotta continually um, keep sharpening. My leather mentor, like I've said in another video, um, box knife. You can change box knife blades all the time um, and you can save yourself a lot of time and headache. Um, okay, now that here, I'm gonna, good example here. There's a weak link in this. There is a crack, maybe that's a little bit of something happened to the cow there. I'm not gonna use that end. I'm gonna go back and use the other end and feel it as I go, make sure it's all nice and strong. Don't wanna give as much as you can defective, uh, I'm all about quality, so giving a defective product to somebody. But again, if you're making saddle strings for yourself, not a big deal, but the price of leather anymore is getting to be really ridiculous. Um, like just like everything else. So we're gonna do one more. I buy a bunch of them because I do a lot uh, with not only these. Now this one here, look, this one, somebody when they went to cut it, so they probably did some strap cutting is really, really narrow down here. So again, I'm gonna go back to the other end. Feels good. And I'm gonna use that end. This is why I get the saddle strings a lot longer. I can always use the others for scraps because something is going to be defective, okay? So there we go. So we're gonna throw the scraps aside. And then what I'm gonna do is step away from the camera for a second and grab myself a new blade. Um, I should have done that before and I didn't. So then I'm gonna show you how to cut the ends. So, and it, it's up to you how much you want your end to lop off okay you can make it short you can make it long and usually what you could do is grab a ruler i usually do it by by hand but you can grab it and put it like that and then just go ahead and cut and get this a little bit closer here so you can if you want to get that precise I, you know, I, I don't usually, I just go ahead and, because I like to be able to see what I'm cutting. And there you go, you've got your end. Now, if I wanted to, I could skive these, or not skive them, but I could bevel them. And there you go. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to, the other end now if you want them the same way it's up to you you know how you want to do this so if you want them the same way or the opposite way just meet up the ends and if you want them to be the exact same way that one's a little crooked but again once it's on the saddle it's not going to notice then you can actually do that Okay. 
or if I wanted them to be the exact same, I'd flip this over and flip that over and then they would be the same that way there. And I'll probably clean these up here when I'm not on camera and do those. All right, so I'm gonna pause right now. I'm gonna go ahead and do all four and then I'll be right back. Okay, pretty easy, right? Pretty easy, okay. Okay, so we are back. And so I have uh, prepared three of the saddle strings already. However, I'm gonna show you how to go about doing this, all right? So we measured them for um, uh, 66 inches. Now, just so you know how a cow is built, on the back of the cow is where the strength of the leather is, depending on how they have um, thinned the leather, whether it's at you know eight ounce, six ounce, skirting, all that kind of stuff, or down to three ounce, you know, down to two ounces, that kind of a thing. However, with saddle strings um, and cows, you just know that a cow is usually gonna go about 70 inches on the average. So if you want something longer, like your reins and things like that, they actually have to be two pieces of together or whatever. So just keep in the back of your head, you got 70 inches pretty much to work with. All right, so we've got our, we've got our thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold them in half and we are going to um, just go to the center. Let's do it this way, makes it easier. We're gonna go to the center and I just crease it a little bit cause that's where I wanna put my, um, I wanna put my hole. So I'm gonna go in here. Now you can have, this is a pounding board just for noise on the bottom here. This is something my leather mentor had given me and I. I should be cutting it off, but I loved him so much. It's just like, I just keep using it over and over again. But he made this for me um, as just a multi-purpose um, thing. So we're gonna just punch a hole. Now we're gonna punch a hole that is just big enough for that screw to go into. I'm gonna look and I'm gonna place it pretty much in the center. Now remember, this is gonna be not seen, so it doesn't matter. Now if I was to need something more accurate, then I would definitely measure if I needed to. However, just remember, we're trying to get just the screw there. So you just need a hole that is gonna be, be a big enough for the screw. Now, remember I said, <laughs> and, like, and you gotta be able to get it out. Um, okay, so remember, let me grab one of the old saddle strings. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little hint why I don't like the way that they did these. Only because, see how that broke? And when you do the, the hole, it has to be a larger hole because it's got to be able to go, this piece has to be able to go through that hole. So it's got to be a big hole. So it makes this very, very weak. So what I do is I do slits. So let me show you. So if you're good later, we're going to go ahead and we're going to want to put this through that hole, right? And you're going to be having a hard time working it and you're going to get it through. Yes, you can do it. However, look at how it stretches that out and thins that even more. So if you use a split like I've done here, you take that and tuck it through and that comes through really, really nicely. So most saddle makers will actually just do a slit. Some people like to do the hole. Maybe it's their signature of how they do theirs, whatever. So we're gonna do a slit. Now for purposes of teaching you there is one good side on the leather okay if you see the rough side this is actually the underside that is where the skin where it touches the muscle and all that kind of stuff the other side the shiny side that is the finished side so you want to keep the finished side out as much as you can but we've got our hole here and so what we're going to do is we're going to take about an inch remember the hole um, and for training purposes, I'm just gonna say, okay, about an inch here, right? I've done so many of them that I've, I'm used to it. So now when we make our slit, okay, we're gonna take it about an inch, but we only need it the width of this, guys. Don't need to make a really huge hole. You can, um, and sometimes we do. So we just wanna make it so that it's gonna get through there. 
And so you've got a nice slit there. And then I turn it around because I have a bad habit of slipping sometimes. And I do not want to slip into that hole. So if I make the hole a little bit bigger than what it's supposed to, I'm not going to sweat it. It's just something I'm not going to worry about. It's going to have a little bit of look different, but not much. So there you go. Okay. So now we're ready to put these saddle strings back on. Okay, so um, we've actually got our things conditioned here. We've got everything all nice and conditioned. Now, this is going to be darker on the saddle for a little bit until the um, sun gets on it or it dries out. Um, and then it'll turn back to its natural color uh, that it was before. So what are we going to do next? So we're going to take this saddle string and we are going to make sure that the underside is there okay um, and we are going to connect it to here okay but we're going to do this here on the back side reason why we're going to do that is because we need to slide these through here now got to be careful if you've got leather that is um, too thick you're not going to be able to do this either because these slots are a certain width they're just a standard okay so we want to make sure that our hole is lined up because that screw is going to go there all right oops my phone is ringing i forgot to turn off the phone and it says scam so you know what you guys are just going to hear the phone ring for a second all right sorry about that all righty so i'm going to make sure that that hole matches up and I'm actually going to take this screw. Oh, stop. Stop already. And go ahead and put it through there. Now we got it through there, right? Okay. Now, is this going to stand up? Yes, it is a little bit. Okay, if you don't like that, if the if it's a little too thick, then what we're going to do, now I got that stuck, so I got to unscrew it here. You can actually take this, put this on a corner, and pound it. Ouch. Yeah, pound my thumb. Ha! Pound it a little flat. Okay, not a big deal. Okay, and then we're ready to put it back on the saddle. Now we've got these new conchos, right? So I'm going to grab one of those, show you how to do that. That's pretty, this is a pretty simple part, you know. A lot of the time the conchos are screwed in. It all just depends on what you want. Okay, so we're going to put that one, oops, that one there. Put that one there. And now that's how that's going to look. Okay. So, but I've got to go ahead and screw this on, but that's going to look, and then we'll go ahead and finish it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop and I'll get back to the saddle again, and then we will put these guys on and we'll be done. All right. See you in a minute. Hello, everybody. We're back now. And um, we've got, I've got one side already done and it didn't take but a few minutes to put together. And then I also trimmed the laces to um, the saddle strings to make them a little bit shorter. I just didn't like the length of them um, because they are very, very long. But you make them as long as you want them or have your um, saddle repair person <clears throat> make them as long as you want them. All right. So we're going to get started on putting these back together. So <clears throat> just so you know, uh, this is my round. I'll show you that there. This is a wool uh, applicator, a round wool applicator. And so what I do is I just buff these um, and make sure that they're nice and shiny before I put them back on. See how that shines up really, really nice. Okay, so that's really nice and shiny. And these are gonna still be a little bit darker because there's also mildew on these but I want to keep the saddle as original as possible. And I'm taking off some of that, any extra black rock that we put on there, okay? Um, anything that might be extra on there, but I'm also just polishing them up. All right, so now, 
what we're going to do is we are going to put the first one on here. So like I said, we're going to take in and run it through. Then we're going to see where our hole is because we got to match up that hole. All right. And then we're going to see where that's going to go. We're going to get it all put together. So where is my hole? It's there. So I'm going to pull that one through a little bit more. Try to match that up. There we go. We're all matched up. Push that in nice and tight. All right. And then I'm going to grab one of the screws. We're going to put that back on there. So this has the two marks for this for the um, and there's on these on these when you pull these apart, you're going to have one that's sort of bent in on the left. One's going to bend right. Make sure you put them back on the right side of the saddle, because um, if you don't, then you're going to have it all flipped up in the wrong area. And, and then the screw is not going to get in there. Okay. So we're going to push that screw right through there. We just want enough so that we can get a contact here into the hole. There we go. Make sure everything's straight. Now, if you're using a drill, make sure that you put it on the forward. You don't want to go backwards again, all right? And go slowly in there because you do not want to strip that or you're going to be having problems later um you you once you can't plug those holes as easily as you think you can okay you don't want to strip any holes like especially if you're replacing a concho on a horn most conchos on the horn are very very short because some um trees make a metal horn inside so you got to be really careful when you're doing those when you're replacing those conchos i'm using just a little short tack here's what they had let's see if i have the what did I do with the screws that they had in here? Don't need them that long, really. Uh, I don't know where they went. But you don't need them long. They were just a little bit too long. So these are just attacked to stay in place. So I don't have my saddle hammer right now. So I just take the edge of this hammer and tap that in until it's flat. Okay. And then I do the same with this one. I don't, they don't really need these little um, nails, but it helps support it. All right, so those are nice and in. We're going to grab the concho. Grab. Missing a concho. Oh, no, it's on. Okay. So we're going to take um, and put this through. move this saddle just a little bit back hopefully hopefully you're getting this because I can't tell this is the old GoPro and then you're going to take this bottom one come through now you have a nice pretty concho now to me this is a little bit too big for this here okay they do give you two smaller ones so I'm going to try and see if that looks a little bit better there because you're getting into this groove here and um, it doesn't fit there. I was trying to match them all up because um, just I like a little formity. <laughs> but you can also do this. You can also change them out too if she wants to. Pain in the butt because you've got to take the what I'm going to show you here out. So you can do that too. It all just depends on what you like. But because I put the other big one there, I'm gonna put the big one here. I don't like it small. To me, it is too small. But you guys do what you like. Because this uh, concho set came with a, a six pack. So if you're going to ask me to do change your conchos out, please know your conchos or purchase your conchos because there is so many kinds and I charge a research fee because um, the thing is, I've got to cut this just a little bit more. I got to be really careful. 
because I don't want it too big. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this bottom one. Oh, here's another tip. So say this is a little bit too tight. I take a, a screwdriver in and I loosen it up a little bit and then I can go ahead and put that tip through. You just want to put the tip through, okay? Put the tip through because, and you want to use your fingernail or your thumb as much as you can to try not to damage that tip. You can always trim it, you do, but you're gonna pull this through. Okay, now I'm gonna hopefully get a closer shot here because this is a little too tiny because we had a too close. Okay, and I'm using the bigger concho. So make sure you wiggle it through. If the hole is just a little bit too tight, you can actually take your box knife and make it a little bit bigger. I like this bottom one really tight though. Okay. we've got the first part but then my, my next move is to bring this bottom one through the top now my hole might be a little bit too small here I can again make it a little bit bigger just put the tip through now, if you aren't strong enough, you can always get yourself some needle nose pliers and help you pull through that way. Make sure that your, your strap is flat, guys. Make sure it's flat, not twisted, because if you get it twisted, you are going to end up having to pull that back out again. All right. My hole's a little bit too small. So I'm going to take this box knife and be really gentle. Just, even though you can't see it, maybe, I definitely can. This is a troubled. Definitely need some troubled. This. Okay, so I've damaged the tip. Not a problem. Like, probably will be. Okay, now you're going to pull hard, pull this one. This one's going to be a little bit tighter. You want this tighter, and I'll show you why in a second. And there you have a pretty design. Now, because we damaged that tip a little bit, okay, it's not too bad. But I'm just going to take my leather shears, make it a pretty tip. Okay. So there we got one done. And that will flatten out as it sits there for a little while. But now you have a pretty tip. So let's go ahead and do this last one. Again, I've already started to put it together, just to basically the same thing. And now I'm gonna grab the grow. Oh, you know what I did? I did something wrong. I realize. I'm gonna stop this for a second. And I'm gonna be. Okay, we're back. And my mess up wasn't too bad. So I did go back and put the small concho back on the front um, because silly me, I haven't done this for a little while and I forgot there was a back concho, very far back concho. So um, just a little adjusting and here we go again. So we're gonna take this and we are going to put this through. 
here. And then we are going to going to put it through. Make sure that your hole matches up in the middle there. That's where your screw is going through. All right. And we're going to take this screwdriver and push it all the way through. But I personally, so this does have looks like a one nail on there. So put that in there. We're going to make sure that our drill is moving forward. We're not backward. In. Slowly but surely. go as slow as you can because you don't want to um, rip these Phillips screws. Try to keep that straight. Okay, that's about as tight as we're going to get that one. Then we're going to put our contro back on. My other contro. Oh, we have the other one on there. All right. These conchos are weird because um, I'm going to tell you that they're almost the same size, so it's really, really weird how they have it. We got that tight there, and if you want, make your your slits just a little bit bigger so you can get that through. Slide, slide that tip just with your fingernails through that slit. And then pull. That way you just, again, don't damage your, um, damage your saddle string too bad. Okay. Now, doing this, you can turn it and twist it so that the both are, uh, the shiny side is out. Or some people like to have that little look of having the rough outside there. Having a little bit of a difference. I like to do a little bit of both, but... Depends on what the person likes and also how the leather is working as well. Right? There's another one, pretty one done. And we're going to go to the last one. Oh, we didn't even clean this one up, did we? Okay, let's go ahead and clean this guy up. Boy, I missed it. See, guys, I'm human just like you guys. I'm human, you know? Uh, I've been doing too many things today, so this is what's going to And we'll go ahead and just clean this up real quick. All right, here we go. So I've already set this one up. So we're just going to go ahead and screw this back on. And if I can find the last screw, there it is. My next door neighbor decided to run his drill or whatever while I'm doing this video. Hopefully it's not um, that you can hear me okay. All right, so we got that. Um, and we're going to do the drill. I'm in that hole. There we go. Pull that down so I can see a little bit better. All right. So there we go. Right. Tiny side there. And. To do this quickly because I don't know what he's doing next door, and I really don't know if he's gonna get saw. Oop, there goes my phone. All these noises and everything. Hey, this is a live working shop, so this is a definitely a live working shop. I don't know who that is. 
So, then we're going to take this bottom one, a little bit, make that hole a little bit bigger, right? Alrighty. And we're almost done. Okay, and there you go. You have some new saddle strings. So I don't think you're gonna see it on my big camera, but we have the saddle strings all set here. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go around each one and check where I wanna trim the length of them, and then it will be ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this. Please have a wonderful day. Don't forget to watch more videos like this on the Leather Lady LLC on YouTube. Um, and or go to my website, theleatherladyllc.com, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.